Hello everyone, welcome back to another Top 10 Commander video. This time I would like to talk about the 10 best mana rocks in the Commander format. My criteria for this list and pretty much how I do most lists, it's not on what I think is the most powerful mana rock, it's what I think is the most consistently played while being powerful. I think there is a difference there, so while we can say something is really powerful if it costs like $500, we have to factor that in. So number 10 here is Gilded Lotus. We could also give a quick little nod to Thran Dynamo. I think they are kind of close, but I still like Gilded Lotus a little bit better, even though it costs one more mana, because you're getting colored mana. And if you have any ways of untapping all of your artifacts, like with a dramatic reversal, Isochron Scepter combo, there you go. You don't, you don't really have to worry about any other mana rocks. Gilded Lotus is really all you need to go off with infinite colored mana. If you ever needed to know how powerful a card like Black Lotus is, just know that people would be willing to pay 5 mana to do the same exact thing. Then number 9 we have Chromatic Lantern. I think as far as Commander goes, this is a pretty tame mana rock. It's not something you're going to see in competitive EDH, kind of like with Gilded Lotus. It's going to see casual play. That being said, most 5 color decks in casual EDH are going to need the mana fixing, and this is the card that will give you the best mana fixing. Not only does it itself tap for 1 mana of any color, but all of your lands will be able to tap for that mana as well. So it kind of takes away the luster of something like a Prismatic Omen. While that's still a good card, if you have something that can tap for mana, it's just, it's so much more useful. And then number 8, we have the newest card here, we have Jeweled Lotus. Commander Legends was very interesting, and I do like how we have more Commander-specific setup cards that kind of gives Commander its own unique identity. And this is going back to, of course, Command Tower. But we have Jeweled Lotus here, which is essentially just Black Lotus, but one you can only use the mana for to cast your Commander, so it's obviously nowhere near as powerful. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate how this isn't going to break something like Legacy? Any kind of Eternal format aside from Commander, they're not going to use this. So the design is very specific to the Commander format, and I think that was a great idea. Is it as powerful as Black Lotus? It depends on what you need for your deck. If your commander is the majority of what you're going to be doing, then yeah, of course, it's going to be pretty powerful and useful. But outside of that, most decks are going to want mana rocks that are more useful than just a one-time use to cast your commander. And then number seven, we have kind of a tie here. It's open to interpretation. But I have the Signets from Ravnica, the original Ravnica block, tied with the Talismans from Mirrodin. I think they're very similar. They both cost you two mana, and they can tap for at least one of two colors. I think the Signets might have the edge because you don't have to pay a life to do it, and you will get two different colors of mana. However, there are situations where a Talisman tapping for one colorless might be useful if you're playing some kind of Eldrazi-specific card that only interacts with colorless mana. But these are very good in casual EDH and even some competitive decks. Once you get past two mana, it starts to get a little bit more casual. Not really something that people are looking for to speed up their deck, so these are perfect. And then number six, we have two cards I think that are better than the Talismans and the Signets. We have Felwar Stone and Arcane Signet. Really just better because they can tap for more than one color, more than two colors. Arcane Signet might seem like it's the better of the two because it can tap for whatever color of mana you need, but Felwar Stone can tap for mana outside of your commander's color identity, so keep that in mind. It's sometimes relevant. If you need to cast something that your opponents have, and you're playing something like Send Triplets, Felwar Stone can actually help you out. So definitely don't sleep on it and assume it's the weaker of the two. Then number five, we have kind of a tie here, but I think we know which one is a little bit more powerful. Grim Monolith and Basalt Monolith. Grim Monolith, in my opinion, you get it out there turn two. It's quicker, it's more competitive. Basalt Monolith, not draining your bank account, is really the one thing it has going for it by comparison. You are still able to combo with it, however, Grim Monolith does have the advantage. You have the Power Artifact combo that you can do quickly, whereas with Basalt Monolith, you can tap and untap it infinitely and synergize with something like a Mesmeric Orb. These are two very powerful artifacts, and I think just being able to provide you with three colorless mana makes it so easy for you to go off your following turn, if not the turn you play it. I mean, it's no secret, if your mana rock can tap for more than just a couple mana, it's going to help you more than the ones that don't. And then number four, we have kind of a tie here between Chrome Mox and Mox Diamond. We can also throw a nod out there to Mox Opal, and maybe even Mox Amber. But these Moxen that are obviously legal in the Commander format, 
aren't a very similar power level, you do have to end up getting rid of one card from your hand. Even though Chrome Mox is significantly cheaper, I mean Mox Diamond is easily over $500 now. Chrome Mox, I think, might actually be the better of the two. Saying goodbye to a non-land card in your hand is sometimes better than getting rid of a land. It's kind of open to interpretation depending on what you fear more, but they are still very close. And then number three, we have Mana Vault. You're just going to see artifacts here that are one mana or cheaper that are going to tap for a lot more mana. Kind of like the Moxen. It doesn't really seem like a disadvantage. It doesn't seem like you have to wait another turn before you get your mana. The turn you play a Mana Vault, you're going to ramp, so you get two mana. You do have to then afterwards pay mana to untap it, but that's the cost of playing a Mana Rock that will tap for three colorless. It's an easy choice for any kind of commander deck, even outside of competitive EDH, where your commander is rather expensive. So if you have a 7 mana commander option, you're going to want to play something like Mana Vault, because that's essentially like having a ritual, which will help you get to your commander option quicker. And I shouldn't really have to explain to you from here on out why these next three cards are going to be very useful and competitive. It is just such an advantage in this format, and people have complained about these kinds of cards because it just puts you so far ahead of your opponent. And then number two, we have Mana Crypt. A very similar situation. I would say it's definitely the better of the two between Mana Crypt and Mana Vault, because it's able to untap itself. You are going to risk losing more life, but, you know, ask anyone if you're getting mana, if you're drawing cards, and you're paying a little bit of life here and there, you're going to make that trade with a smile on your face. Mana Crypt just makes it so much easier to play certain decks. And it makes it super easy to have things like the Ad Nauseum win con, where you just play an Ad Nauseum. Of course, you're going to have other things in your deck, but Mana Crypt that only costs zero mana, you go off in a turn, and it's super easy to go off in a turn. It's very similar to number one, and I think you all know what number one is, but this is technically better. It's just $100. So not everyone who is introduced to this format, not everyone who's going to play casual is going to want to play a $100 card. So before I go on to number one, let's talk about some honorable mentions. I think Lion's Eye Diamond almost made the list, but then you have to consider it's kind of specific. It's even more specific than Jeweled Lotus, because you need a deck that can really survive after playing it. You are going to be discarding your hand, so keep that in mind. If your deck is really good with the graveyard, this is one of the most powerful mana rocks you can play. We have Mindstone. I think Mindstone is far from a bad one that you can play in the commander format. It's not really competitive because it doesn't tap for colored mana, and it only provides you with one colorless. But here we get a mana rock that is more useful in ways outside of mana, so you can sacrifice it to draw a card. Also, why I'm going to mention Hedron Archive, because it taps for two, but you can sacrifice it to draw two cards. We have Coalition Relic. I think Coalition Relic, very similar to why someone would play a Chromatic Lantern. It's very good in decks that need the mana fixing desperately. All right, so number one should be no surprise to any of you, Soul Ring. It's not as powerful as Mana Crypt, and you can make the argument that it's not as powerful as Mana Vault. I mean, if you can abuse any of those, they're definitely more powerful. Soul Ring is a one mana artifact that taps for two colorless mana, and that's it. It's very simple, anyone can play it. It's one of the most ubiquitous cards in the format. It's been reprinted in just about every commander product that you can think of, so it's dirt cheap by comparison, while also being incredibly powerful. This is still going to give you a ridiculous advantage over your opponents, and it's why everybody plays it. Even decks that don't really need the colorless mana advantage are still going to entertain playing a Soul Ring. This is up there. If it's not the most played card in the Commander format, it's right next to it. It's one of those no-brainers that you immediately know. You only really have to worry about the other 98 cards in your deck. You know this one is Soul Ring. But anyway, let me know what you think about these 10 mana rocks in the Commander format. What are your favorite mana rocks? Subscribe if you like the video. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future ones. Leave a comment too. Let's talk about this. Void here signing off. Have a wonderful day.